Welcome to episode 109 of the Guitar Builders Basics video podcast. Luthiest tips, tricks and training from me, Ben Crow, with Crimson Guitars in the UK. Uh, this is supposed to be a podcast that I put out five days a week, but <laughs> in, the, uh, in the last few weeks it's been a little bit more erratic than that. Uh, we've, we're releasing a bunch of footage that we filmed of a kit guitar being taken and turned into something much more. And uh, we put the first video out and it got a heck of a lot of views and the second video out and everybody was saying, well, where's the second video? Give me my fix. Uh, so instead of the podcast going out five days a week, uh, we're putting out at least two of those videos a week and then filling out the rest of the time with podcasts and tutorials and, and stuff. And uh, I've actually had to take three days off to go on a first aid course. Uh, and haven't been able to film anything since, well, during that time. Anyhow, that is a slight digression. This is the podcast, and in it, I answer your questions on all things related to building guitars, basses, um, using fine tools and not-so-fine tools. And uh, so what that means is you need to ask me a question. Please do so in the comments underneath this video, of course, and uh, I try and reply to that. Uh, also go to the guild, crimsonguitars.com forward slash guild, and we have a forum with uh, thousands of members, all talking about guitar building and repair and, and stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, you don't have to be a premium member of the guild to uh, see the forums or to take part. Although if you are, it helps support uh, everything that we're doing here and helps pay the wage of the, uh, the girl that edits all these videos and allows them to uh, be released. Also, and I'm going to do something called Mid-Month Madness. As you know, we sell tools and jigs and templates. Not so many templates at the moment because the CNC machine was acting a bit funny. Um, but... Crimson Guitars make fine luthiers tools, and it's a big part of our business. Um, now, if you've been eyeing any of those, uh, here is a coupon. In fact, watch to the end of the video for the coupon. It will get you 15% off for the next week. So that will be uh, a coupon valid till the 22nd of June 2015. And uh, just to be an arsehole, I'm only going to tell you the coupon at the end of the video. Ah! Um, anyhow, now this is a very interesting video, or question at least. It is from Jason Abbott on YouTube, and he says, I'm just wondering if you've ever come across a neck that has a twist along its length, uh, where adjusting the truss rod doesn't truly work. I had a go at a project but with a slightly twisted neck, which in the end I gave up on and shelved for another day. Uh, I found ideas such as removing the fretboard to plane the neck straight, but this removes thickness from the neck. Um, or clamping the heel, applying heat and steam, and then weighing down one side of the headstock uh, to slowly pull the twist back. Any suggestions in how to sort out this problem? Now, basically your first suggestion actually is probably the best one. Um, once the wood is moved, that is going to be its default setting. It will want to stay twisted. And it is an issue. It is what it is. You know, wood is finicky and difficult. And every now and then, it just turns around and says, well, actually, I am going to screw you over. Now, this is a baritone telly um, custom neck that we made for a client, oh, six months ago. This would have been drying in plank form in, my st in, in our timber store for at least a year and a half or so and came to us kiln dried. But because of the vagaries of um, it being bird's eye and flamed and you know it's got a few odd little inclusions and things, it's actually, I'm not sure if you can see that, but completely twisted. Now, the nice thing is, in this case, it's actually twisted in a positive way. It's pushed at the nut end of the treble string, it's pushing back. And at the 24th fret side on the bass, it's up that way. 
what that means is my wrist is not actually under tension when I'm playing down here and it moves in a standard basically it stays comfortable and ergonomic all the way along now my client isn't interested in having a twisted neck understandably and we're rebuilding this neck for him out of you know even drier and less figured timber but I'm gonna take this neck reshape it a little bit probably even accentuate the twist a little bit more and uh, we're gonna build a project for YouTube and out of this twisted neck so what I'm trying to say is if the twist is that way at the nut it's actually going to make for a more comfortable instrument to play and it doesn't affect the action each string is on its own plane um, and as long as the frets are straight on that plane it's it's not going to cause an issue um, I really like the feel of a twisted neck it, it just it's more comfortable um, if however your neck is twisted in the other way then you really do have to do drastic things uh, if it's not a major twist, if it's not massive, uh, I would suggest take the frets out and then use a, a leveling beam. Here's the Crimson Guitars 12 inch leveling beam. Um, I'd go with a 16 inch one at least, really. Um, put some fine paper on it and actually change the thickness of your fretboard. Okay, take away the high areas on the fretboard and then refret and you should be okay. Now that's if it's a small amount, half a mil, possibly half a mil on one side, or half a mil on the, other, on the other corner, on the opposite corner. And this is something that I've done in the past and it works and as long as it's small amounts, nobody will really notice. In fact, a lot of guitars come with a fretboard that is way too thick for what it really needs to be. You know, a seven mil fretboard, you could go down to six mil and not actually notice it. So you could take the whole fretboard down and not really notice that there's a mill or two's different. Okay, and then you refret and, and go from there. The real, um, the recommended method, however, is to do just what you said. Remove the fretboard entirely, plane down or sand down if you're not good with hand planes. Um, leveling beams are great for that. Um, and actually repair the neck itself, remove the twist that way. No luthier will recommend trying to steam it and move it that way. It is, steam is violent, it's hot, it's messy, and you are, you've already got something that is unpredictable. You don't know what's gonna happen. You introduce steam into an already twisted neck and it might well actually make it worse. Um, put weights and judicious use of clamps and weights and all that jazz. You're going to spend half a day playing around and it might be fun, but six months down the line, you're not going to know if it's going to re-move itself back and you know, you can end up back where you started. The other issue is finish. If you're repairing somebody's guitar and doing this, you're going to have to strip the finish off and re-lacquer the whole thing. Um, if it's a kit guitar or, a, or an instrument that you're playing with, yeah, that's fine, you, you can deal with that. But the cost of refinishing a neck is the same as it's pretty much a similar cost or maybe even a little bit more than taking the frets out and, and leveling the fretboard that way. So I would really suggest one of those methods. However, just to throw a spanner in the works, uh, because I like spanners and throwing them at people, I didn't admit to that. I, I wasn't there. Um, Okay, a lot of people, and I've done this in the past, if you have a repair where the neck isn't twisted, but you can't get it put flat enough, you can use your frets to push the neck flat. So what you do is you take all the frets out and you hammer the tangs of the frets down or possibly use um, tang, uh, a, a crimping, uh, pair of crimping pliers, um, which we really need to actually start making and supplying in our shop, come to think of it. Uh, and that will fatten the tang out. So when you hammer it into the fret slot, 
it pushes against the fretboard more. Okay, so you can do this on a neck that's not flat enough. It's got too much relief, and the tension will push the fretboard back, and you've suddenly got a neck that actually is flat enough. Now, with a twist, there is nothing saying that you cannot do this, but only on half of the fret. So, for example, using our baritone here, um, it is twisted so it's going essentially, let's get this right, from here at that angle, and it goes flat, and it goes down like that. Now, if I wanted to remove that, I could take all these frets off, make the tangs on this side up to there much fatter, and that will compress the fretboard just on that side and push it back. And I'll do the same on this side, compress the frets on this half of the fretboard, and hopefully that would compress the neck and push it that way. You heard it here first. I'm actually really rather excited about that idea. I've, I've not heard of anybody trying it, and I was looking at this question going, hmm. And uh, I, th I really honestly think that that could work. Um, so essentially, basically, I want somebody out there to try it and tell me that I'm a genius, because um, I think that that could be a, a very useful technique. And you could finesse it and move it and change it around and use different size frets um, to work it out. And you, can actually, you would actually or should actually be able to see the neck moving back as you put the frets in. And that would be the least invasive possible method of repairing twist in a guitar neck. Um, if you have any other methods that you've used, please let me know. Uh, I learn as much from uh, your comments and suggestions as you, seem, as you learn from me. And uh, it's really important to me that, uh, that I continue to learn, basically. Um, so, yeah, please click like. It's actually surprisingly useful for a YouTube channel to have people click the, that little like button. Um, please subscribe. Please check out the Crimson Guild. And if you want to support us financially, go um, and join up as a premium member. You get access to, it's got to be coming up on 100 new vid uh, videos that aren't on YouTube. Or 80 or 90. It's, there's a lot of videos up there. Uh, we release five or six videos a week on YouTube, and we release two or three a week on in the guild as well. Um, and that obviously helps pay the wages around here and is really appreciated. Another way is to go to the shop and check out all of the wonderful tools that we are making by hand in the UK, uh, in the workshop upstairs. Uh, they're being very noisy this morning. Uh, and, of course, there is a coupon. Now, if you go into the shop, It's supposed to be written down on my phone here, but it isn't. Um, if you go into the shop, and the coupon is MMM, which stands for Mid-Month Madness, 1975, just for fun. Uh, MMM1975, and if you enter that into the coupon box after you click View Cart, that will get you 15% off anything in the shop. That is up to and including a custom guitar, well, production guitar. We've got a few guitars in there, and in fact, um, hopefully by the time this video goes live, there will be the new instrument we took to the, uh, the, a recent guitar show, and also a prototype Perspex bass that we built um, as a prototype for Goldfrapp's bass player. And uh, that should be in the shop as well. Uh, this coupon will work on a custom instrument. So again, it is MMM, standing for Mid-Month Madness, 1975, and that's uh, small letters, not capitals. Ha. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Have an excellent week. I will be back soon. Goodbye.